Okay. All right, let's jump. We can help diagnose that problem a little bit later. And now we're going to switch over to creating a, uh, let's say, a Gatlin gun. So what I'm going to do is just select the polysphere. Okay, and you can't really see it in the recording, but there's the polysphere. I can see a little bit here. It might not show up in the recording. Uh, and so I need to change the material. And then, still super dark, I need to press switch color. And what that'll do is it'll take this light gray and move it here and take the dark gray and move it there. Let me look here one second. Alternate. Good. Okay, so the idea, now that we're back in a 3D space, uh, is to start to plot out how we're going to do this Gatlin gun. So make sure you've got, you know, you've done the, the research, you've looked at these things. I'm going to Google it really quick just so you see it. And so this is what we're going to do. This is real simple, but it'll illustrate a couple of the things we need to be mindful of. We're going to work with six cylinders. And then we're going to work with a seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth cylinder. So these are all cylinders. Some of them are hollow. So six of them are hollow. And uh, four of them are not, although they do have this circle in the center, which we can put in there or not because there's either a hole there or there's a, um, a, a bolt in there or something. Okay, I'm going to move that off to the side. Uh, Steve was just asking a question I think is probably pretty relevant about um, finding ZBrush or finding web content through Lightbox. And I'm looking in here, I think it's been removed. That was the conversation, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I can't find it. Okay, so the way we'll do this is using primitives. So we're going to go into the tool palette, we're going to select a cylinder 3D. And notice that it says Cylinder 3D, it does not say poly mesh or PM3D. So Cylinder 3D, we're going to come down to the Initialize Settings and see if we can find something uh, to make a difference here. So we'll zoom out a little. It's at a default setting of just how do I say it? I mean, this is a ZBrush unit. They're all basically one size. So this 100 does not relate to anything other than a ratio. Let's go and say 5, 5, and then 100. There. That might be reasonable. What's this inner radius? Uh-oh. Awesome. All right. So everything happens here. Anybody tell me what 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 are primitives? How's a primitive? Um, how's a primitive different than a poly mesh? Anybody know? This will probably be a question on your certification test, and there is a reason why it's really important. Who uses a uh, NURBS? So NURBS are what they call, if I remember correctly, parametric objects. Uh, Johanna says it, it's a mathematical base that allows variations along very specific parameters. So parametric is your key word that we're talking math. <laughs> it's not a conversational wor word. <laughs> um, what, what it 
what the difference is between a poly mesh and a parametric object is that a parametric object is controlled mathematically through algorithms that allow you to kind of manipulate it. Uh, NURBs are like that where you can manipulate the, the CV curves, the points, um, you can loft, there's a, there's a lot of stuff you can do uh, programmatically. Uh, and a poly mesh is totally not. There, it's it's free form. There is it's not controlled by an equation. Now that said, the future is on the. There's definitely some room for on the fly algorithms that uh, are able to parameterize free form objects. And this is not going to be on the test, but what you're starting to see with things like Z Remesher, which is not here because it's not a poly mesh. But Z Remesher is literally discovering new algorithms or new equations. It's, dis it's the beginning of being able to parameterize your model down into discrete chunks of information that is actually manipulatable via sliders. Like imagine if you were to create some mech creature like this and it knew instantly, you know, this was one side polygon face and you had a slider that would just automatically pull things out. It's kind of where things are going. So let's not dally there. I'm going to set that to 75. Yeah. And uh, now what we need to do is convert this. So make poly mesh 3D. And uh, now we need to see how we are going to put this around a circle. So we need to find a way to put this evenly distributed. So one thing I'm going to do is come into draw, ELV, set that to zero. Why would I want to set that to zero? ELV removes this kind of automatic adjusting feature. It basically puts the grid at wor in world space. Let's just say it that way. ELV of zero puts the floor in world space. An ELV or elevation of negative one, which is the default, means that wherever the bottom of the, your model is, the floor is going to be there too. If you adjust where the bottom of your model is, then the floor goes there too. So it's, it's kind of a dynamic adjustment. And that was really so that if you had characters, you could always put the character on the floor. And then if that character was casting a shadow, do you love my character? then that shadow would always show on the floor. And then in rendering, when we get there, you'll see there are ways to kind of cast shadows on background images, things like that. Okay, so, but we, to make our lives easier, want to set this to zero. And we've got a couple of options. We can offset this so we get some kind of standardized parameter some standardized setting. And I haven't done this in a while, so you'll have to excuse me if it gets a little crazy. Uh, I'm going to say offset. Whoa. I'm doing the manual way right now. Um, there's even a, there's another cool way where you could use insert sphere or insert mesh along a uh, on another mesh. Whoa. That's going to not turn out good for Ryan. Negative 20. Yeah, that might be it. I'm looking at the guns, and if that's the circle for the center, which is the same as that, it looks like there's one circle in between and then another circle. So that's a good distance. We basically need it to be uh, one, two, three. Maybe an 18 would work. OK, subtool. I'm going to say duplicate, go back to deformation, 
And uh, now I'm going to say offset this by negative 20. Oops, I already did that. I'm going to set offset that by 20, which puts it back at the center, and 20 more, which puts it off to the side. And now I'm going to duplicate that. Deformation. And we want to offset in Y. So Y, X, the little tiny buttons. I'll draw that. That slider looks like this, and it's got X, Y, Z. And you have to click the little tiny letter. I'm going to offset that in Y, and let's do some math. So we have 20, 20, so we know that this has to go up. 20, this has to go down, 20, but the uh, way this is going to work is that it's going to go about here and here, here and here. That should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, uh, how far up do we put this? And how far in? Let's say if we go half and half, does that cut? Anybody want to do the math with me? That kind of doesn't work. 20, then rotate. Yeah. So, see, it gets a little bit on the complicated side, right? <laughs> Let's try uh, something else. I'm going to go move. And you see how my, my line is already right there at the center? Let's do this. Rotate. All right, I'm already getting steps. This is going to be the, the easier route to take. So what we may want to do is adjust it so that it automatically it's going to stop once, twice, and, and there. So then we have to come into preference, drag this out, and uh, let's go, where is that again? Transpose, max rotation steps. So how many rotation steps do we have? So this says four. One, two, three, four. So remember this. There, this number of four means four within a 90 degree. And we want two. One, two. Sort of, right? But not really. Like, we need it in between there. So now our math gets a little complicated. I'm going to do this. I'm going to see if I can do this real quick, but it's a little bit different. It's more like we have to do um, 2.5, which it's not going to do. Let's go 3. Or we got to go up in specs. So from 4 to 8. Anybody want to do that math? Let me know. But otherwise, I'm just going to. Uh, pretty soon, just call it. Okay. Uh, now, I can move this around. I can duplicate this guy by using Shift and I press Control. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, that's going to skew it. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the best way. Okay. We're going to go to Move, press Control, select that middle dot, and bring it back into alignment. So I went to Move, I pressed Control, selected that middle dot, and just moved it up, and then moved it back. Okay. So now, now what do we do? We've got this kind of lined up. We've got these guys. 
we need two more. So we've got a couple of options. We can split these off. Let's get preference out of the way. And I'm walking you through this slowly so you just get the thinking process. Where are these guys? Let's go into solo mode. Ah, see, now our life is real easy. Because this is one, one, and then these are the two that we need to basically duplicate and flip down here. So what is this axis? What's that green axis? X, Y, Z, what is it going to be? So that means that if it's Y, we're going to click here in this Y button, turn X off, and we're going to mirror and weld. Didn't have to weld anything. You know, we're pretty much taken care of there. But there we go. So now if we turn perspective mode on, we've got the beginning of it. And it didn't really cause us too much trouble. But there were some steps uh, that we kind of had to go through.